Okie dokie. So today we're going to talk a little bit about um, getting OSC values back from NX32 console. So um, a little while ago I showed you guys how I mapped out um, an Ableton session uh, using OSC Send. This is a Max for Live device that I've modified um, so that it saves my um, IP address of my console every time I boot this up so that it doesn't have to reopen. And then also I've, I was able to do like fader and pan and like all of my effects and mix levels and all, all those types of things in one device rather than having to load a bunch of different ones. So that, that really simplifies that. So you can see I've got some banks of faders, 1 through 16, 17 through 32. I've got some of my DCAs. Got a little bit of uh, clip automation. I won't get into that today. Um, returns. Uh, made some automation there. And then you can see I've got some parameter controls on my effects. Um, these are, I will call them return channels, but they're just um, basically just control channels there as well. So that's all fine and well. Um, if I come over here to X32, let's get rid of that thing there. Let's move you over here, make you smaller. So if I come over here to my X32 window, I can see that, I don't know, for instance, let's um, try moving fader one. Great, there's fader one. Here's fader two. We've got uh, our pans, which um, either I'm not seeing currently on on this screen or not mapped out. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, things go where they're supposed to. Zero over here matches to zero over here. Um, I couldn't get the exp uh, the exponential modifier quite right in Ableton, so it only goes up to about plus 5.2 um, with that, that current zero point being there. Um, you can scale that however you want though, so um, do whatever you need to. But you can see, here's where this gets a little annoying. When I go into X32 and try and map those values back into Ableton, I can't really get that to respond. Um, so what we actually need to do is to get the console to respond to us. Um, and what I'm going to do here is mm -hmm, um, use um, an IAC driver. Um, and then we'll do Osculator back to Ableton. So the IAC driver on any Mac allows you to send, it's basically a bus that allows you to send MIDI to, MIDI to and from different programs on your machine. So what I've discovered through a little bit of reading in the documentation is that in order for X32 to spit values back out as a subscription service, you have to, res you have to subscribe with this X remote parameter. Um, and you have to do that at least once every less than 10 seconds. So um, what, what we really need to do is have a reciprocating value um, of sending this X remote command out to X32 so that it will continue to spit us uh, values out. And here's my workaround. So what I've done is I'm taking this MIDI clock, and we can see our regular intervals there. Um, and I'm actually just going to map that to this X remote um, command. Now theoretically, if I, I'm just going to close this, now theoretically, bam, we're going to get a bunch of MIDI notes and things here. Uh, there's my incoming, we're going to see outgoing. There we go. So you can see that I'm sending this X remote command out at every interval. I'd like to be able to slow that down, um, so I'm trying to currently trying to figure out a way to do this entirely in Osculator with just like a, a ping every eight seconds or so, because otherwise this, this I feel like is going to be uh, bogging down a lot of traffic. Um, anyway, that's the next hurdle. But um, the exciting thing is now that we are subscribed, let's move a fader in here. Oh look, oh look, channel two. Oh look, channel three. Oh look, channel four. Oh look, channel five. And we can go on down the line, and we'll just go through eight for now. Um, and 
map those things out. There's my solo. Um, there's my mixer. Ah, that's that's why I didn't see my pans. Here's pans. Uh, there's my pans. There's my pans. There's my pans. Here's my pans. There's my pans. All right. Cool. So we've got now. I've got basic commands back from the X32 now into Osculator. And what I'll do is now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called back mapping. Um, and I have not yet created the messages, but like say for instance this one will be a um, I'll call it a MIDI message and then I will come into my collection and send that out there and that will go out channel. I think I'm using 11 um, via my loopback and then we'll map those things to my individual channels. So that means that we will have uh, um, communications in both directions from Ableton to X32 and back from X32 to Ableton. So that'll be really useful for us to create um, real-time show automation um, by mapping out actual moves and then relinking those to musical timing um, and that's kind of it for now but I just I wanted to show you that this X remote command less than every 10 seconds is what allows us to get this feedback happening from the X32 console so um, yeah do with that what you will I'm, I'm really excited for the next step and kind of building this thing out hope this has been helpful